Gio, finally we're going to tell the story, your story. Hey guys, this is Gio, I am Cesar Milan and today we're going to see an episode of Gio. Actually, I am Gio's number seven home. He was pretty much placed in different homes for seven times until I work uh, with him and, uh, and a show that I did at Cesar 911 and Gio was pretty aggressive. He was creating a lot of chaos in their home. So let's watch it and see how this little thing this little beautiful pug created so much chaos in six different homes. I think the, the way you did it was kind of crazy. Caesar received a 911 call about an aggressive pug that's not fitting into family life. He's bit me four times. What? You know, when a dog bites someone one time, it's bad enough. You know, people lose trust, people lose the joy. But once a dog bites the same person four times, Resentment grows, fear grows, anger grows. All these negative feelings grow, you know, and, and people just learn to take it. And of course the dogs feel that. And it creates a separation within the family. It creates, a, um, you know, this, this feeling of why, we, why do we take this dog? Why do we, why this dog came in living to our home? By feed. This is about to get really bad. Caesar has seen enough. Wow. This part, he bit me. He, he went after me. My name is Shannon Hill. I have a one-year-old pug. He's aggressive towards people. And Chio was one-year-old when I met him. Wow. And he already had six different homes. Six different homes. This guy. And five other dogs I have in my home. The thing that wow, I love you are most about handsome. him are his little googly eyes. You still and are. He's just a little cute puppy. Ooh. The problem is, he's bit my daughter four times, and he bit me. Wow, did you realize you just went after a big dog? Twice. I'm beyond desperate because each day that goes by, his behavior becomes worse. I thought that if I smothered Gio with a lot of love in a good home, that he wouldn't bite. Smother Gio with a lot of love and a good home equals not bite. It's the opposite. Since he's bit my daughter. Okay, no why is the opposite, right? Why would a smothering someone with a lot of love and give him a home what will create an aggression? Why would that do that? I mean, why we want, we want to be loved and we want to live in a home. So why, how would that make us aggressive? But in this case, uh, she was smothering him when he was misbehaving and, and uh, having a home with no rules, boundaries, limitations. So that's why it, it, it just became bad. No one in my family wants me to keep the dog. My husband is done with him. He wants the dog to go. I say no. <sighs> so once someone in the family, especially a that wife or the husband, don't want, the agreement is broken. They, they, the support is, is, is no longer there. So that also uh, uh, creates a lot of tension in the house because the humans are not in agreement. And the most important thing on this planet is agreement. Without agreement, there's no direction. Without direction, there's no commitment. With no commitment, there's no follow through. So we put our dogs in that situation where husband and wife are not in agreement and we're about to find out what she thinks about that. Our only solution would be to separate. So, she's saying the only way um, this can somehow have a happy ending is if the humans separate, divorce. If the humans get divorced, that means Shannon will take Gio and the rest of the family will stay at home with the dogs and everything else. And they had the most amazing home, the most amazing pack. They had such a great pack. Gio came to a really, really good home. It's just Shannon, for some reason, um, um, thought that with, with Gio, she needed to behave completely different. So she separated Gio from the amazing Shannon, you had an amazing, amazing pack. And the husband and the wife, and the husband and the daughter and the son, I had a son as well. It was just amazing. I was, and they had turtles too. 
Caesar asks Todd to re-enter the house so he can show Shannon how to get control of Gio. All right, let's do this. I want you to see how what I do. No tension on the leash, very, very important. That allows Gio Ooh, not to feel the face of Gio. If you choose a more calm approach where you are more confident about it and then they have no choice just to go in the back. See this, this hole. Mm-hmm. Remember? The calmer Gio. Yes. Mm. Tell us do that again. I want you to see. Yeah. Looking at you, what a behave, how to react. There's no tension on the leash. This is hesitation. <laughs> this is good. Oh, you still do that behavior. Do you actually look at Shannon first to see how she's behaving? Mm -hmm. And when she was hesitant, so was he. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn not to see Gio as what happened in the past for him, but what he's doing right now. Okay? It's not that he's suffering. It's not that he's hurt. <clears throat> that was, that's actually the hardest thing uh, to help. Uh, people who are so emotionally invested first. Nothing wrong with being emotionally invested. I love what I do. I, this, this place uh, represents my heart. But when people are emotionally invested, um, they also bring the past into the investment. Meaning, the reason why I give Gio so much love is because I think that in the past, he didn't receive this much love. So they're trying to compensate this this uh, this activity without just we you know disregarding how Gio is behaving at that time. So she just in the past um, thinking that that the Gio is suffering, you know. So this so this suffering with com combined with affection creates this aggressive little pug. Heard is just he's hesitating and he's unsure. Why? Because this new guy came in. So as I'm hearing myself, you know, on season 911, and uh, when I did all the other shows, um, I said, like, how do I'm gonna tell humans that a dog is imitating what you are feeling? She was hesitant, Gio got hesitant. You know, she was tense, Gio got tense. So I started at one point in my career, it's like, how do I tell people that the energy they are, the body language they're showing, the dogs are gonna imitate because they absorb energy and they watch. They watch, you know? So how would a dog learn to open a refrigerator? Because he watches a human doing it, plus he knows there's a smell behind, right? So how does a dog learn to open doors? He watches a human doing it. You know, how, how is, how is, yeah, how do they learn anything? Because they watch. So however you behave, tension, movement really fast, that's exactly what they're gonna do. So we are teaching our dogs, not just verbally, energetically and with movement. Simple as that. A lot of times when people rescue dogs, they feel so much empathy to the point that they feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. They feel they, they have to compensate yes. by mm -hmm. giving more to him because he didn't have it. You see, actually when I say to compensate, <clears throat> she actually got happy because she feels like she's doing the right thing, you know? So emotionally you are, but uh, uh, is it effective? No, there is times where, where being emotional is not the right thing to do. It happens to all of us, you know, that we can't be emotional at that time. We have to be instinctual, spiritual, or smart about it. And so we have to move the emotions aside. So for her, uh, when I say, because you feel so much empathy for him and you feel that you have to compensate uh, the love that he didn't receive based on your, uh, I'm talking about Shannon, based on Shannon's way of looking at the world, she feels that she has to shower Gio with affection only, regardless how bad Gio is, to the point that she's even having a conversation and speaking about separation from the family just so things go uh, in some, some sort of healthy way or some some. I, I totally, I'm, I'm just watching the video again. I, I see how my mind reacted when I heard Shannon saying, well, if my family doesn't want Gio and then I separate from my family. I don't think that's necessary. I love the loyalty part of it. I love the, the commitment part of it, but there's no need for that. I think it's best if you get rid of, uh, if you get rid of uh, unwanted behavior or or that you get rid of uh, the way you look at it in life. That causes a big problem. 
I am not sure Shannon understands that she's no, projected she's her own insecurities onto Gio. Mm -mm. Instead of being the confident pack leader he needs, she's actually reinforcing his own uncertainty. Let's do it again. Okay, so here's the switch. Let's see here. Let's see how this space is. So instead of moving forward, he moves back. With you, you have to stay back pulling away. So that puts him in more like. Well, if you want to learn some leash work, uh, if you want a dog to, to, uh, to move back and, and being respectful, social distance, and then you move in energetically and then he gives you the space. But if you, you pull the leash back, you're going to end up in the back and they're going to go in the front because what they're sensing is weakness. Tension is weakness. So if you put tension on a leash, they will interpret it as weakness and they're going to go in the front to protect you because you feel intense. What's happening right now? What are you, what, what are you, what's happening right now? Just whatever it is. He looks scared to me. So mm -hmm. that's your interpretation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that he can't be fixed. He's, he's crazy. He's wow. crazy. How do you see it? I do. When I heard her saying that she believes Gio is crazy, that to me is crazy. Because I don't <laughs> see a crazy dog. It's just I don't see it coming, any attacks. And you don't think you can provoke that? Do you think I provoke the attacking? I do. Shannon keeps saying that she's afraid of how Oh my God. I didn't realize how... <sighs> See, that's protection. That I'm protecting... I'm protecting Gio at that time. I, didn't, I never... You know, that was my first time meeting him. But for her or for a human to say, that gorilla is crazy, that tiger is crazy, that shark is crazy it's the same thing as somebody would say that dog is crazy and i'm not saying that neurological problems are are not real but this is not a neurological problem you know this is not an inbred dog this is not none of that so when she said i think she's crazy and i think he's a scare all of that is happening in her head all of that so my <laughs> oh my god i just went back into memory right now she's afraid he can't be helped it's her fear that is causing all the problems. Yep. I'm going to have a difficult time convincing Shannon that she needs to change first. Mm -hmm. You brought it here. Okay, so I brought him to the house where yeah. everything was peaceful and calm. Yeah. And I allowed him to just run the show yep. and run around my house mm -hmm. where everyone else had to be contained. That's right. Everybody else had rules, boundaries, and limitations. Right. And, and he, he said, didn't. you don't. Wow. So I don't think the dog is crazy. I think, I think the, the way you did it was kind of crazy. Now you know what not to do. I made a mess. But we can <sighs> clean it. All right. It's good that Shannon is admitting her mistakes. Yes. But that's just the first I step. I forgot about I that. Need to show her that her energy is causing Gio's problems. Woo, Gio, aren't you glad you could live with me? You have a ranch now. You're, you're growing older. We love you so much. We will live in Pack Nation. So what happened after that, uh, Shannon was not able to, to move forward. Shannon had, you know, she couldn't just move out of how sorry he feel, she felt about Gio. Um, it was a lot of chaos in, in, in her relationship because of Gio. Uh, obviously not because of Gio, it's because how she chose to go about it. But like I say, she, they had the most amazing pack I ever been with. They didn't call me for the pack. You know, they had like two or three pit bulls and, and a J Jack Russell and, and turtles. Amazing, just amazing. The dogs are under control in a super healthy way. It was just, it was just the most amazing uh, home, you know? So, uh, oh, Andre, Andre loves uh, pugs, and we had sugar at that time, and, and um, I said, well, um, uh, we, so, so I said, well, you know, Shannon, it's not my job to adopt every single dog that I work with because people can move forward, but we would like to adopt uh, Gio from you, and so that's how Gio came and lived with us. Gio was part of season 911, which he was a 911. 
Definitely. I mean, biting, biting a, a, a girl for four times. We are his seventh home. <laughs> so everybody was bitten. You know, that means six homes. Uh, he was pretty much rejected from every single home. And, and um, so I became the number seven, but the last one. And so Gio, this is his forever home, his forever ranch, his forever family. I hope I can see him again in my next spiritual life because he's amazing. We love him, he's the best cuddler. Uh, he also is an incredible guard dog. Um, he patrols the house. Every 30 minutes he's patrolling the house for whatever it is. Uh, ghosts, ants, squirrels, whatever, whatever my trying to enter into my territory in my house. And, and um, he's just became amazing. After that, it's no aggression, no nothing. It's, he's just the greatest. He's actually his favorite, favorite friend in this whole wide world. Guess who it is? Junior. So they age together and I'm very, very happy, very proud, very pleased, very, very big honor to, uh, to, to have Gio as a member of my family and, and definitely a, uh, he's like a, a coach, shirt leader for Junior. Because as soon as he sees Junior moving for the ball, he's right there coaching him. And so this little, this little fella, it was just misunderstood. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.